to Krzysztof Bozak, formerly represented the League of Polish Families, and he was the second youngest person ever elected to the Polish Parliament. He subsequently became a member of the National Movement, and in 2019, he became one of the leaders of the Confederation Coalition Brown Leroy Narod, Narod, Narod Wichy, sorry, <laughs> difficult language. <laughs> Um, and uh, on whose behalf he ran for elections to the European Parliament this year, yes, but failed, but not to be put down, he was elected last week uh, to the Polish Parliament with a majority <laughs> with a majority of 22,158 votes. Hand him over to you now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Um, I would like to uh, explain you a little bit the situation in Poland uh, because uh, I read uh, articles in English press and international press, and uh, uh, we believe that there is many misunderstandings about what's going on. And we are uh, just uh, one week after big success that we have in Poland now. After 12 years, uh, we go back to the parliament from our own list that we created. Uh, so I think it's an uh, interesting example for all um, traditional people in Europe, in England, and not only in England. And uh, our experience is uh, quite similar to what colleagues from Sweden said. Uh, I, I, of course, our situation is probably much better, but, uh, but, but uh, threats are quite similar. Uh, so I, I will try to explain it, and then uh, maybe you will have some questions, so, so I will try to uh, answer. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate uh, English people uh, about Brexit. Uh, we follow the situation in England. Uh, I was probably the first uh, man in Poland uh, who reported the debate in the English Parliament about uh, that time it was in out referendum. Uh, the speeches of uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg and other MPs uh, in 2011. I was uh, probably uh, <laughs> among a very small group that followed this debate since 2011. And uh, it was um, it was very good for us uh, that you voted correctly uh, against EU because we were always silenced in Polish media and in Polish debate that it is impossible to do anything against the European Union because everybody are in favor. So uh, English people uh, gave good example, and last year we proposed our program of poll exit in Poland. Um, and we try to uh, start debate. It's very hard in Poland because uh, Polish nation is probably uh, the most pro-EU nation in Europe. Uh, but we try. There are may maybe about 5% um, people in Polish society who are in favor of Brexit, and about 20% uh, people who. Um, are not in favor of European Union under some circumstances. Uh, going back to our success, uh, we made, uh, after 12 years of um, trying to be independent as a national movement, we are a national conservative movement, traditional and nationalist movement. Uh, our ideology is Christian nationalism. Uh, so after 12 years of um, struggle, uh, one year ago, we tried to uh, build the coalition with conservative libertarians. There are two, uh, two branches of Eurosceptical movement in Poland. Christian nationalism and conservative <coughs> libertarianism. Probably you heard about Congress of New Right in European Parliament. Uh, their famous leader, uh, Janusz Korwin-Mikke, is uh, very political incorrect uh, and uh, he had some speeches in the European Parliament so uh, he's the leader uh, that we made a coalition we also invited to coalition many other uh, smaller movements or political groups 
that are conservative or uh, pro-national, pro-independence, anti-EU or uh, right-wing <coughs> and not connected with Law and Justice Party, which is a uh, center-right camp which rules Poland for four years. And can you speak up a bit? It's difficult to hear I, I can hear you a bit louder. Uh, louder, okay. Maybe, maybe it doesn't work enough. Okay, um, so um, we made a coalition to the European Parliament and the threshold is in Poland 5%. We made a, a 4.7 uh, and it was not enough. Uh, and uh, it was very surprising that in national elections, everybody in the Polish debate said that national elections is harder for Eurosceptics, for uh, nationalists, for traditionalists. So um, whole campaign, all uh, center-right journalists said that there is no chance that we will enter. And uh, what happened exactly is, is, is a big surprise for everybody, even for us. We doubled our result. In European elections we got uh, more than uh, 600,000 votes and now we got more than million, million and two hundred thousand and yes, more than million and two thousand uh, uh, thousand votes. So uh, it was very surprising uh, because it's the best result since the fall of communism in Poland for political incorrect party. We never uh, had better result. Uh, for example, my former party. A conservative Catholic and Eurosceptic League of Polish Families 15 years ago, their best, our best results was 1 million votes and now 20% uh, uh, more. What is uh, also very important uh, is the um, structure of the voters. Uh, we have 20% uh, uh, of the support among young people, so it's a big shift. Uh, in the young generation, uh, young people vote left. We have <coughs> something like Polish Podemos or Marxist party, new left party. So uh, unfortunately, some part of young generation support them, some part of young generation support mainstream party and us. And uh, we, have, we had a result in uh, whole society 7%, 6.8%, and uh, in the young generation, 20%. So, uh, and among people who are uh, more than uh, 60, maybe only 1% or less. So, we can say that uh, our list is a list of people who are uh, in the middle generation and who are young. Uh, and uh, I think it's a very good sign for, for the future. We will see uh, how it will develop. Uh, I uh, uh, took a flight from Warsaw just after first meeting of our new elected MPs in Warsaw. So we made uh, um, one uh, club uh, in, in Parliament. We have 11 MPs. Five are from National Movement. Five are from Conservative Libertarian Party. And one is a, a former presidential cam, uh, candidate, a traditionalist. He's, uh, he's not from the politics, he's rather from media. He's a director of uh, um, documentary movies, politically correct. Um, so, uh, so we have 11 uh, people in parliament and uh, what I would like to uh, say a little bit more is um, the difference between confederation, because this is our name, confederation. So first we will, uh, we were pro-Polish coalition, it was the first name, then official name was Confederation and all these parts. So uh, Nationalists, uh, Corvin, uh, Leroy, um, um, uh, we, we had uh, more than four parts and now we have, uh, we have uh, official brand Confederation, Freedom and Independence. Freedom and Independence, these two terms uh, define us. Um, so, uh, what are the differences? Probably uh, you heard something that uh, in Poland uh, the government are populists, maybe nationalists. Um, everything uh, what you heard is not true. In fact, we have a center-right government, 
of course, it is very different center right than in England or in Sweden because we are a different society. But uh, when you take uh, the polls from Polish society, it's a center right, even centrist government. Uh, everything what they do is uh, deeply uh, analyzed with the polls. They do nothing against uh, the polls. Uh, so, um, the Prime Minister, to understand the situation, you should know that the Prime Minister is a former economical advisor of Donald Tusk, current leader of the European Union. So, he's not even, he was uh, not even elected from the Law and Justice Party into Parliament. He was taken just from the banks, like Macron uh, in France. He was a CEO of a uh, foreign bank and uh, leader of Law and Justice Party took him directly from the bank to be a uh, Minister of Finance and after two years to be a Prime Minister. And we know that it was planned uh, at the beginning to make him a Prime Minister. So uh, to, uh, to put him to Ministry of Finance, it was only a, um, how to say it, um, a, a, a stop uh, for two years uh, to create him like Macron or other people who are create, created in politics artificially. Uh, second thing is, uh, what you should know is that uh, the leader of Law and Justice Party is from the tradition of Polish patriotic socialism. He's not uh, from conservative tradition, He's not, uh, he was always strongly against nationalist tradition because we have strong tradition in Poland of um, independence, uh, fighting for independence of our country and um, democratic nationalism. And he was always strongly against it uh, because he was always pro-EU, he was always um, uh, pro-tolerance or um, on almost everything. Not pro-cultural Marxism, but strongly pro-tolerance. And um, yes, uh, there, there, there was always big tension because uh, it started when was uh, when in Polish debate was uh, um, the issue of joining the European Union. We were always against, and uh, these people who formed Law and Justice Party they was always in favor. When there was debate about the Constitution for Europe, Lisbon Treaty, we were organizing manifestation against it, and they were supporting it and voting for it in Parliament. And of course, uh, they were always voting for everything in European Union, with one, um, with one um, exception. Thank you very much. Uh, with one exception, uh, this uh, refugee uh, obligatory uh, redistribution. This is first time, and it was uh, after our manifestation in 2015. We organized manifestation in whole country, uh, in every bigger city. And uh, after they took power, the first uh, the first uh, statement was that they will be loyal to obligation of current government of Donald Tusk to European Union. But after they saw the manifestation in whole Poland, that we don't know uh, these mandatory refugees, uh, so-called refugees, uh, they changed their mind. And since that time, they had the line that they are um, always against illegal immigrants. But what you should know that we uh, take um, the biggest number of legal immigrants in the whole European Union in 2018. A majority of these legal immigrants is from Ukraine. It's more than one million for now. And it is increasing and nobody counts it because we, we have open borders with Ukraine and whole political class in Poland supported it. We were maybe the only one who were against. And um, yeah, so, 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 so this is the uh, first part of migration problem in Poland. And second part is, of course, uh, migration outside Europe. Uh, they are smart enough uh, to understand that Polish society will not accept uh, Muslim immigrants and immigrants from Africa. What, uh, so what they find out that uh, the polls show that Polish nation is a little bit uh, easier to accept migrants from Asia and they started migration from Asia because of economical reasons because uh, our workers who went abroad for example to England and uh, many employers uh, do not have enough uh, people to employ uh, so uh, they look in agencies and they took uh, from Nepal from Bangladesh from Philippines 
uh, from India, uh, from many different Asian countries. They started to uh, talk with Polish society, for example, that Philippine people are Catholics, as we, so it's not a problem. They will be Polish <laughs> very fast. Uh, so, of course, we are uh, maybe the only uh, one um, in political life in Poland who say that it's not so easy. We should be very careful. We should follow the um, experience of Western nations. But uh, not everybody would like to talk about this because it's hard, it's not easy. So uh, what I would like to do here is uh, to invite all of you to Poland to talk about your experience of multiculturalism. Because the Polish nation is too optimistic about this. Uh, Polish uh, people are um, open, with, uh, naturally open. This is our culture that we are rather open to foreign people. We would like to uh, show hospitality always. And, um, and we don't know too much about experience of multiculturalism in Sweden, in uh, Germany, in England, because uh, Polish media, whether they are right-wing or left-wing, uh, do not write about it. Right-wing because support Law and Justice Party, so they, they, they don't want to uh, write bad things about migration. And left-wing because they are, they are left-wing. <laughs> So, uh, and Catholic media also do not touch this issue because they are Catholic, so being Catholic, uh, Catholic should be tolerant and so on. So uh, we have problem, we have problem with um, <coughs> free debate and, uh, and um, uh, transmitting this experience from different European nations to normal Polish um, people because uh, this uh, small circle that is deeply involved in politics they understand what's going on, but normal people don't read everything on the internet in foreign languages. <laughs> so, uh, so, so we need speakers from abroad, in fact, and we can organize everything uh, for uh, anybody who, who can speak publicly and uh, would like to go to Poland. It's not far away, only two, two hours in, in plane. So you are invited. Um, what else I should uh, add about these differences? Uh, maybe uh, a single word about uh, culture and uh, social issues. Uh, we are strongly conservative, uh, always against everything from the left. And uh, law and justice government uh, try to do nothing on LGBT issues, gender issues, um, some uh, pro-life issues. They killed uh, pro-life uh, bill two times or maybe three times. Uh, now they uh, try to kill uh, a bill, so-called anti-pedophilia bill, which is uh, in fact against sexual, sexual education in left-wing uh, direction and against um, uh, entering the schools by LGBT movement. And they uh, say in media that they are against, but they do not act. So what we try to do is showing to the public that uh, politicians from the center-right camp uh, say something different and do nothing when they have all power in the country because in fact uh, they have president, they have majority in parliament for four years they had also majority in senate now they lost uh, four seats uh, they have uh, the courts, the highest courts this is the, the big debate between Poland and European Union that uh, opposition thinks that uh, they took these courts uh, broke in some uh, rules it is uh, not so clear. Um, so yes, uh, this is about the, the culture. Uh, what else? Economy. Uh, the uh, economic policy of the government, so-called right-wing government, is uh, left, left, leftist. It's a typical building a welfare state with benefits from everybody. Uh, they even uh, do not care who is a citizen, who is not a citizen. They build it in four years, a system of many benefits for everybody and they say it openly that they try to encourage people from abroad uh, with these benefits. Um, what else? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, what else uh, I, I said about nationalism and immigration, about economic, culture, EU. Uh, of course, uh, you know, Polish government is uh, described in uh, press, in the media, as anti-EU. Of course, it's not true. 
uh, of course that's not true. Uh, they always say everywhere in Poland that the worst case scenario is Poland leaving EU. Uh, they would like to be in EU but on their own rules. We believe that uh, in Poland uh, there is a long history of uh, uh, of talking with Polish people, by right-wing politi politicians, with something that we believe is completely unrealistic, because Polish uh, politicians from right-wing talk to Polish people that we will change European Union to the right-wing organization, <laughs> and uh, of course you know that it's completely, completely impossible. Everybody who uh, is interested in how EU works. <laughs> Uh, understand it's impossible, but normal uh, Polish voter is not interested in uh, deeply in this. Uh, so when uh, politicians uh, come back from Brussels and say that uh, we fight very strong and we are close to achieve some goals, uh, people believe, oh, now we have a strong government, <laughs> like Trump or something. So they will change the European Union. Maybe not now, but we need some more years and maybe the European Union will, will change. And it's quite easy for Polish people to believe, believe it because the uh, majority of Polish people feel um, the benefits from economic cooperation with all European economy, with single market. So uh, it's not easy for us uh, to campaign against European Union. And European Union um, uh, is, um, how to say it, um, changing uh, Polish law, changing Polish institutions. Is, is changing everything with um, some regulations. For example, in whole Polish universities and science, uh, gender uh, indicators are introduced. Uh, we don't we don't need it. Uh, we, we didn't ask about it, but uh, it's obligatory, and it's only one example. So so uh, so so the situation is it's not easy. But what is uh, very what is very um, uh, good for us is this success. We will be in Parliament, uh, we will be uh, with 11 MPs. It's not a uh, very big number because law and justice have more than 230, because this is the majority, 230. But uh, our people are very tough. Um, from this 11, maybe nine are good speakers, in, uh, experienced in media debates. So, um, in my opinion, uh, this uh, small group is much better than, for example, 100 MPs from the Law and Justice Party. And uh, you can check it yourself, even if you don't know Polish, you can type these uh, names in uh, YouTube to find out how many uh, media debates with leftists we had. It, it, it's not hundreds, it's thousands. It's thousands. We work. Uh, I personally work uh, since 18 years in public debate uh, on the national level since 15 years. So we made a very big uh, work, and uh, and uh, this is just the start, <laughs> in our opinion. This uh, alliance with conservative libertarians uh, works quite good. Of course, we have differences on many things, on economy, maybe on immigration. They are a little bit softer on immigration. But uh, we work in good atmosphere, we are quite loyal to each other and uh, I think that we will develop it uh, till next elections to be much, much stronger. So uh, this is the situation. If uh, One more thing to add is, uh, of course, that we organize the biggest patriotic uh, manifestations in Europe, uh, March of Independence, which of course uh, are uh, marches of normal Polish patriots. Maybe the majority are voters of Law and Justice Party, uh, not even uh, nationalists. Maybe nationalists are three percent of the crowd, maybe five percent, rather three than five. So uh, everybody are invited. Also, we had uh, we had Tommy Robinson, we had colleagues from Sweden, we had uh, colleagues from France, uh, from many countries. Uh, if you would like to attend, it's 11 of uh, November. It's 11 of November every every year. Uh, we, we just uh, started um, the inviting people. We had last year a very interesting situation because we had conflict with government which tried to take control over, over the march with power <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we were tough and uh, we organized uh, our march in the same place that the government organized 
and we had conflict in courts, uh, in media on the street, and finally two marches were in one march. Very strange situation. The government at the beginning, we uh, with normal people, and we will see what will happen this year. Uh, this march is uh, something that is uh, very. Um, <coughs> Leftists are very nervous. They try to block it many, many times. Uh, they try to attack it. Of course, they po uh, 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 describe it in international media as neo-Nazis march, which is completely, completely false. Uh, so it, it, it is even it was even discussed in European Parliament, and we have uh, cases in courts with Guy Verhofstadt about what what he said about the march. So. Uh, if you would like to see it, uh, you can see you know, the reports of Tommy Robinson, it was maybe two years ago, it's on YouTube, and you can also uh, be yourself, you are invited. Uh, this is what I would like to say, and maybe you have some questions.